Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. A long time ago, uh, somebody asked me if I'd show a method of making a very simple wooden carpenter's uh, clamp. Um, and I thought I'd written the chap's name down. I haven't, and I've looked everywhere. I, I can't find it. So whoever you are, I do apologise. Uh, th this was the idea that that uh, person had in mind. And uh, it's a very simple idea. Now, this works very simply. I'll just put this little block of wood in there, and then we just... Tighten up like so. And that's your piece of wood held pretty securely. Now, uh, for me, the secret of making this uh, was to find these things, which you see sticking out here. And these are, uh, they're called a number of different names. Uh, I've heard them uh, referred to most as dowel nuts. Uh, they've got a thread in the middle, and mine have got an 8mm thread, uh, and they're circular in cross-section, uh, and mine have a diameter here of 12mm, and I got these from eBay. They're also called dowel barrel nuts, and so they've got this <laughs> double barrel name, and I'll call them probably lots of different things uh, throughout the video. You know me. Now, you're also going to need some 8mm threaded bar, I got this from Screwfix. It's cheap and cheerful stuff. It's not particularly good quality, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll put the uh, details on the screen. My advice to you is to get some better quality than, than this that I have. This first part is quite straightforward. I've cut two pieces to length, and I've just taken uh, that uh, edge off there so we have the traditional shape for this type of clamp. I've now marked my uh, lines. These are the centre lines for the uh, two rods, which are going one in this way, one in that way. And I've got the centre lines for those uh, tubular nuts, which are going to go into these positions. We actually only need two, which are going to be working with their uh, 8mm thread. The other two I will drill out to give clearance, uh, because uh, they will be in a fixed position uh, on the bar, providing a sort of anchor point inside one of the blocks. More of that in a minute. But for now we're going to drill the, for me it's 12mm diameter here, so I'm going to drill the 12mm diameter holes all the way through these pieces where these are going. <laughs> So there they are, there's the 12mm holes, and you can see that those are just a, a nice push fit in there. Now, this, the piece which uh, has the clearance is going to have uh, a washer and a nut on both sides. So there's, there's one on that side, and there'll be a washer on this side uh, and a nut on this side. Now, the, the nuts I'm using are these with the nylon inserts and they're sort of anti-slip, they're locking nuts, uh, and I've got to allow clearance uh, for these to pass through the wood. Now, the diameter across the uh, wider section here is 15 millimetres, but I'm going to need to put a spanner on this outside one. So my spanner is here, and that has a diameter of 18. So the hole coming in from this side, uh, if this is the position, would be 18, and the hole coming in from this side would be 15. And the same would be true here. The hole this side would be 18, the hole this side would be 15. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to mark that up now. I've marked 18 on that one. I've marked here the 15, so here will be an 18. Now the other two holes, we're just going to have the bar passing through it. And that means 8 millimeters here and here. There is a slight trick with these 8mm because uh, they've got to allow a little bit of lateral movement so we're going to be elongating them slightly. Right so we're just going to do the two 15s and I'm only drilling down uh, to just the start of that hole. And the same with that one. Now I'm going to switch to the 18 now, if you don't have those exact sizes of 15 and 18, uh, don't worry, make them just a bit bigger. Uh, it's okay, provided you've got sufficient length across uh, the clamp for those barrel nuts to be uh, resting on some sensible amounts of meat on either side. Now, it's the same as before, we're going down, so not all the way through to the centre of that other hole, uh, just so it just comes to the top of it. 
and you should now have uh, a 18 and an 18 and a 15 and a 15. Now for the 8mm holes which are going in the other two positions we've got to allow for this threaded bit which passes through there uh, to be able to move from side to side and so that means drilling at an angle. Now I could uh, very easily set up my uh, bed of my drill so it's at an angle but it's such a trivial task I've just put a little block of wood under my uh, little sacrificial piece here and I'm going to make sure that as I go through here I'm going to come to the center of the hole so when I get to that point I'm at the center and I'm going to do one from that side and one from that side and I've got an eight millimeter uh, drill in position and I'm setting this angle up so that uh, each of the two 8mm holes is separate from each other but they meet just in the middle. Now the second part of those holes uh, wasn't uh, very easy to do. Now in order to uh, get the angles right on these holes and get them tidied up I'm just going about the brute force, using the brute force method. Shouldn't really do this with a drill bit, but it does work. And that now allows that movement, which is exactly what we're after. So all that's necessary now is for me to clean these up a bit. Right, those are now ready for assembly. Notice I let the saw come to a complete stop, put my hand here then, so I can lift that piece. That's it. The drill that I've used is seven millimeters because that then allows these to screw onto that uh, thread. Right now, assembly is fairly straightforward. I've got the two bars uh, sort of where they're gonna go. And this is one of the smooth uh, barrel nuts, you know, a barrel nut which I've drilled it through for clearance. And so is this one. These are the two barrel nuts which have got their threads in as per normal. Uh, and for the two uh, which are at the ends of the rods, uh, we're going to have a locking me mechanism using a pair of nylock uh, nuts and a pair of uh, washers. Uh, so that that effectively traps this end of the bar here but allows this end through the thread to go up and down bringing this with it. Uh, one's now got to think about how one is going to get these nylock nuts onto this bar. It can't be threaded with the nylon bit first so it's got to go on from that end. So this is the first job to do is to get this one onto there. So the next stage is to put a washer on. And one can fine adjust this now by just placing that part through there, letting that smooth board uh, barrel nut go down into there. And I want to get this slightly subsurface here. So I want that to go just a little bit further. So I would think probably about another two or three turns. So that, that will be fine. So it's now gonna be below the surface here uh, but there's enough meat there for the uh, other nut and the washer to go on. Now, before I actually assemble this, I'm going to get this other one up to exactly the same stage as that. So that's, that's that process done for that one. Now let's concentrate on this one again. Uh, and now what I need to do is to put the smooth bore barrel nut through there. I've got my washer on here. I'm going to feed this in. And now with, with that through there, what I want to do is to put a washer on and then a nut. Right, that's made the start. I've just got to hold this end. And that now is a, a loose but workable fit. So I'm pleased with that. I'm now going to do the same to the other one. With this next one I've got my bit of rod in the drill. I put the washer on the end there. Uh, I'm now going to feed uh, this through. 
but I've got to get my smooth board barrel nuts like so. Next is the washer and then the nut. That's, that one's done as well. That's okay. Now we're going to feed these in like so this time now and this time we've got to get the this barrel nut in the right place for both at the same time. I've not tried this before and maybe there are better ways of doing this. So I'm going to pop that one in like so, this one in like so and I'm going to introduce both of them into their respective places. And once we've got them just through the, the wood, we can then use the gadget to go a bit faster. So I've got it to that stage now, uh, and now it's time to put the handles on. Well, this is Araldite Rapid. Uh, it's reasonably cool in my workshop, so I imagine that uh, it's not going to go off too quickly. So there that is, I'm going to leave that Araldite to go off overnight. And now uh, we can uh, check this out. And now I can uh, have a practice go with this for the first time. And there we go, there's the clamp in action and that's holding that pretty well. Now I, I must confess, <laughs> I'm not a, a huge fan of this type of clamp, uh, but a lot of people are. And I appreciate that uh, this is something which is inexpensive to make uh, and it can be just as effective as some of the larger clamps although it's just a bit fiddly to use as far as I'm concerned. However, I think that the lesson that I'd like people to sort of take away is the usefulness of getting some of these barrel nuts and some uh, threaded rod uh, and making up all sorts of devices of your own. And it, it might be something that involves jig work on your MFD3 or your custom bench top or whatever. Uh, and so I, th I think it's probably quite a good idea to have a bit of thought about what it is you need and whether you can make something quickly and easily uh, to serve your purpose. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.